Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. Oh, the monsoon season in the mountains. Isn't it pleasant? We're way past the heat of summer. We're now into that beautiful late summer, early fall. I mean, this is my favorite time of year. Spring is my favorite gardening time because you've been pent up way too long. And so you get out just to get your hands dirty, to plant some new violas and pansies and broccoli and another fruit tree and some shade trees. It's a planting season. That's good. And I've been pent up way too long sipping tea and and baking cookies and so now you want to get outside for some fresh air spring is is a good garden time summer it's just hot that's made for boating hiking (laughs) camping going out in the shade so that's a good time we're way past that now we're into that late summer fall oh the gardens are mature things look good and so now it's uh now you just go out and enjoy it. So we had lots of backyard parties, uh, barbecues. We had pizza last night. We just took it on the back deck and just enjoyed it because the weather was just so nice. And so it's not hot. It's not cool. It's, it's rainy. Maybe then it leaves. It's just perfect. I did notice that uh, we've had over, let's see, three inches of rain at our house, 3.4 inches of rain at our house. Last month, we had that much, the entire month. We're only halfway through the month here. So uh, August is our wettest month. It goes, this monsoon pattern goes through September. Sometime it will end. We don't know when, but sometime in September, it starts to really dry out. And then it's just gorgeous weather without any rain, without any any weather. It's perfect through October. Actually, into November, uh, depending on the weather, we have what we, what we call Indian summers here. I don't know if how where they came up with that that framework, but uh, that that anyway, it seems offensive. Native American summer, and so anyway, this is uh, gets gets cold and then it comes right back and gets nice. It just does this through the end of the year. This is how we are. That's why I like this as a second planting season. I have more success this time of year, because it is cool. It is moist. The ground is warm. And so there's less in the spring when you're planting a new, let's say, maple tree or an aspen or a fruit tree or a berry, whatever it is, flowers, perennials. Um, Then you've got cold soil, so they don't root out very fast. Tender new growth. And and this prevailing wind that just whips things up and then every night is just brutally cold. Well, this time of year, we don't have any of that. The ground is moist and warm. and Things grow immediately. They're growing really fast right now. But something you can take advantage of with this moisture and the, and the warmth is if you fertilize your evergreens, that's good. We, we told you to do that last month. You should fertilize everything and take advantage of the monsoon rain. This is a growing, it's a second growing season. So you should have done that already. Use the 744 all-purpose plant food. Enough said. If you want to really bring out the flowers, and if you really want to bring out the blue, the blue in Arizona cypress, the blue in Deodor cedars, the blue of Colorado spruce, that that blue juniper, really bring out that blue color of your hydrangeas. Blue, blue, blue. If you want blue on those plants, you're going to need to give those plants, in addition to your fertilizer, some aluminum. Aluminum sulfate. That's what plants pick up. Plants pick up aluminum out of the soil. And that's what causes that that blue coating, that silver blue color on your evergreens. That's what brings out the real intense colors, the richness of, of hollies and hydrangeas. They really appreciate aluminum sulfate. It, it's, it's a supplement that you add to your fertilizer. But you're doing it specifically for those things you want to bring out that color. So I noticed the Deodor cedars we'd fertilize. I gave it some some aluminum sulfate and the all-purpose plant food back in June before the rains came. And so they pushed on new growth. These are very mature Deodor cedars. These are, uh, they got to be at least 30 foot tall, at least 12 feet wide, beautiful swooping branches, a t- nice straight central leaders going straight up to the moon, a beautiful specimen of a tree. But it looked a little anemic. It, it needed some care. 
And so gave it some fertilizer and some aluminum sulfate. And all of a sudden, this plant is rich green, coated with blue tinges out towards the edges. It is a game changer. It's a totally new plant. You look at it and go, huh, is there something wrong with that? You look up close, you go, no, it's just really, really healthy. And that's what you can do. Take advantage of the rain because the, the rain's going to help take those minerals, take that fertilizer and push it into the ground, through the rock, through the fabrics, into the root zone so the plants can pick that up and it makes a difference. This is a season when gardeners take advantage and bring out the richness of their gardens, not just make them grow, make them grow and bloom well. I did the same thing with my blooming plants. So blooming plants, they don't need aluminum. They're, they're fine. They're going to bloom without that. They'd, in fact, they would, they would just leave it alone. The aluminum would sit there and, and, and not be used. Whereas a, a Colorado spruce is going to go, oh, yummy. Let's pick the stuff up. They just, they go, gosh, I'm going to really be beautiful after I get my aluminum sulfate up there. And it just makes them look from green to blue. It brings it out. It's a game changer. Flowering plants, they like phosphorus. So super phosphate is my is my go-to for plants during the monsoon rain. So super phosphate is 0, 018, 0. It's all that middle number. So 0% nitrogen, 0% potash, but all phosphorus. Phosphorus, that middle number, that's what causes fruits and blooms. If you want more fruits, you want bigger tomatoes, you want more hydrangeas, you want more lilacs next spring. You want more salvias, more crepe myrtle color, more. If you want more color, give it super phosphate. And you sprinkle it on the ground and you pray for rain. If you're not a prayer, prayer person, just hope for rain, dance for rain. Rain is what's going to activate it and make it all go in the ground. And so that just releases it. That plant will pick that phosphorus up and go, wow, this is a rich soil. My goodness, I am in heaven right here. Let's just bloom like crazy. And your humming, it brings in more butterflies, more hummingbirds. But I, I use super phosphate on my blooming stuff, especially the really long blooming stuff, lantana, all my annual flowers, my geraniums. What else do I got? I mean, just crepe myrtles are in bloom right now. Uh, my grasses, I want my grass not just to be pretty and soft. And I want them to bloom out those pampas grass to have ginormous uh, plumes on that. So big flowers on, on the, on the grass. And so super phosphate, in addition to your regular fertilizer, again, this is a mineral. So you're adding your regular 744 all purpose plant food. And at the same time, super phosphate, or if you fertilized already back in with the start, when I told you back in July, I told you, Start of the monsoon, fertilize then, you'll get the best growth. If you did that already back then, go ahead and add the superphosphate to those blooming plants, roses. If you want roses, it's just go, wow. Give it in addition to its rose food or seven for all purpose food, give it some superphosphate in addition, and you will have inspiring. I mean, just like, wow, how did. How did they do that? They got the beautiful, they got the most stunning smoke bush on the, on the street. How did you pull that off? Your neighbor's going to stop you going, wow, could you share? How did you do that? This is, we still got a month, month, month and a half, really, of growing season. I mean, strong growing season. You can plant, you can plant things and they will root out immediately right now. This is, a, this is the time to plant some bigger things, a big, if you've wanted that red maple for fall, now's the time. If you want another aspen clusters, now's the time. A spruce or pine, another pine tree to block off that neighbor who just put a brand new hot tub on their back patio and, and you're sipping tea, watching the sunset and watching your neighbors in their hot tub, a pine tree right there, <laughs> Arizona cypress right there. It's a perfect time and they'll root out. You'll get some growth through the end of the year, but then you're setting the stage for next spring. You're really going to take off with growth. So this is a good time to take it, to set the stage. For you folks that have brand new plants, uh, do, do that. fertile. Make sure you fertilized and take advantage of this rainy season. And don't just use any fertilizer. You, you can't use chemicals. Chemical, the Scott's Turf Builders, the Schultz, the, you want an organic plant food. Because if you use chemicals, you burn off all your, worms, all the good stuff in the soil go away. They don't like chemicals. Your plants are okay with it, but they don't. An organic food enriches the soil 
and the things living in the soil, as well as a plant. You want to use that 744 all-purpose plant food. It's a game changer. Got a lot in store for you, but Lisa Waters Lane is coming in with garden questions right after this. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice, seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. 